Over the years here at Survival on Purpose, we've taken a look at a lot of different multi-tools from a lot of different companies. Well, in today's Sharp Saturday video, we're going to take a look at one from the folks at Victorinox that I think may be the coolest multi-tool I've seen in a long time. I'm talking about the Swiss Tool Spirit X Plus with a ratchet. <laughs> yeah, that's what's coming up next here on Survival on Purpose. Welcome back to Survival on Purpose, your home for trustworthy information and gear reviews related to camping, survival, and general preparedness for regular folks. My name's Brian. Thanks for joining me here for another Sharp Saturday video in the luxurious indoor studios here at Survival on Purpose Worldwide Headquarters. And we're only in here because it is dark outside right now, not because it's cooling off, because I like the cool weather. It gives me a chance to wear my uh, Thunder Ranch hoodie, by the way, which is pretty cool. So anyway, I digress. But the folks at Victorinox were kind enough to send me one of their Swiss Tool Spirit X with Ratchet so I could show it to you. And I thought that was really, really cool because this is, the, again, the very first um, multi-tool I've seen that comes with a Ratchet in the kit, which is pretty cool. And we're going to take a look at that. But first, as always, Got to give a big shout out to the folks at Big Daddy Unlimited for making this video possible. The way that works is if you go to survivalonpurpose.com slash BDU, get your first month's membership for just 99 cents. That allows you to get behind the paywall, so to speak, where you can see the prices, which are too low for them to advertise to the, to the um, I guess, the public at large. If you think it's be a good deal for you, and if you think it'll save you money, and you stick around for the regular membership price of, of ten bucks a month or or, or hundred bucks a year, basically there's a ninety nine in there somewhere. But ten bucks or hundred bucks a year, then they'll throw me a couple of bucks for introducing you. So if you save money, it supports the channel without costing you any more money. So I know I save money. It's like the hair club. Not only are they a sponsor, I am a member. So. I save money every year, but you know maybe I buy more stuff than some people. I don't know. But anyway. SurvivalOnPurpose.com slash BDU. Check it out. I really appreciate it. Now, let's get to talking about this uh, Swiss tool. And I think the best thing to do is uh, we don't have a stump top here. But what we have is probably the oldest card table I've ever seen. It's kind of rickety. But we're going to take it down to the old uh, card table top and, and start doing some of that uh, Swiss tool stuff. <laughs> okay, here are all the components for the Swiss tool Spirit X Plus Ratchet, and uh, this one, this particular model I have came with a nylon sheath. It's also available with a leather sheath, and nice little compartments inside here to fit everything in. Uh, this goes over here. This goes in here like so. Uh, maybe turn around like so, probably be better. This one goes in here, the corkscrew, and then the, the, the tool itself goes in here. So really nice, really nice little package. So they say this thing weighs 7.4 ounces. I don't know if that's with everything or just the tools. So I brought my handy dandy scale out here. I thought we would just check it out and see. And so we'll let this thing get zeroed out there. And I can't see it from, I'm upside down. I can't see it. So, okay, I've got 11.0 um, ounces. So that's with everything. So the entire package weighs 11 ounces. So I'm, I'm assuming maybe just the, uh, maybe just the tool weighs 7.4 ounces. That's 6.5 ounces, so I don't know. I don't really know what they included in their weights, but, but that's where we're at. We're about 11 ounces for everything. So let's take it back out of here and talk about it now. So it's got this nice guide that shows you how to do a couple things. I had to look that up. So what we're going to do in this video, just like I've done on some other ones, and some people are certainly going to complain, so you should take the time to research your stuff before you do it, but... I'm going to do this just like you would if you bought this and had to pull this out of the box and try to figure out how to use it. So we got instructions here. We may use the instructions, but I just want to see how doofus proof it is. Okay. That's what I'm calling. That's what I call my process. By the way, the price on this, the MSRP on this particular version is $179.99. Call it $180. Uh, street price I found is anywhere from $150 up. So the uh, overall length of the tool itself is... Dun, 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 dun. About four, it says 4.1 inches. That looks about right to me. Let's see, so let's just talk about it real quickly. It opens up like this, and it says it is a 36 function uh, tool. So, but then uh, the listed tools that has on the list on the website is 33. So we're just going to go through it, try to go over the tools and see if we can count them up. Whatever they come up to is what they come up to. And, and during the process, we're going to do a little bit of testing as much as possible on the different tools. So let's just start with, uh, I've got a list right here. I printed out my handy dandy little list. We're going to do that. 
and go from go down the list because that's the only way I can keep this thing organized. So first of all, there is a corkscrew. Here's the corkscrew. And inside the corkscrew is threaded this little bitty screwdriver, which is later on the list. So we're going to put that aside for a minute. And the way this corkscrew, this corkscrew is used is pretty cool. And it's got a little notch here on the side of it, and it slides right into there. Let's see if I can get it in there like so, and just slides up there. And there you go. Now, you may be selling yourself, I don't need a corkscrew. And you know what? For years, I thought, I don't need a corkscrew. But then because I don't really drink wine very much, or actually at all. But about a year ago, I decided that, that you know, I read somewhere that wine was healthy, and, and my wife was, was having a, a couple of, you know, minor cardiac things. So I thought, you know, I'm going to get her some, some, some red wine that's supposed to be healthy. It's got some good resveratrol in it, and um, a couple of glasses of wine, a glass of wine or whatever. It's not going to make you drunk or get you crazy or anything. So, um, I, but I realized I don't have a corkscrew anywhere in the house, and you know what? I thought I could pry it out with a knife or something. No, nope. you got to have one of these bad boys right here. You got to have some kind of corkscrew. So I can see where it could come in handy. Anyway, I'm rambling. That is a corkscrew. And um, and then um, we'll go ahead and talk about the mini screwdriver since it's the last thing on the list. The mini screwdriver. So this would be for something like working on your glasses or something like that. Uh, item number two on the list is needle nose pliers. So we got some needle nose pliers here. That's pretty handy. Uh, we've also got just some regular big jaw pliers if you need to grab a nut or something. So maybe that's one of them on the list. And then there are some wire cutters here. And there are basically a hard wire cutter, which is right at the very bottom of the jaw. That's where you're going to have the most leverage to cut hard wire. And then there, you could cut soft wire with it as well a little bit higher up. So you see there's two notches there in that little wire cutter area right there, right down there. So the one on the outer knot further from the hinge, I think, is the soft wire cutter. So we're going to try that. I could be wrong. I, okay, yeah, it cuts this, this nice soft copper wire like nobody's business. And the one inside, it cuts, it cuts, it, they both, it cuts both of them, okay? So there's that. You know, back in the day, we had wire coat hangers. So I'm gonna try to cut this, cut a wire coat hanger with the, with the big one. Uh, this is a real, real, di real deal wire coat hanger. This ain't no cheap Chinese coat hanger. So I'm gonna try just to cut a little bit of it off all the way up here and let's see, let's see how well it cuts. Cause this is, it's a pretty solid hanger. So let's see. Golly. Yep. Oh, okay. It worked. <laughs> and man, it put a little red on my hands there. So you might want to wear some gloves if you're trying to cut coat hangers. But and like um, all good multi tools, in my opinion, now um, this this edge is kind of rounded here a little bit. So it's not like super sharp. They got a nice little roundness there, even though it did kind of you know put some pressure on my hand. It actually did a really good job, and there's no play in the in, in the um, Hinge. So that's that's the hard wire cutter and the soft wire cutter. Then it has a large blade, but you have to close this thing up to access the rest of the tools, the blades. And I like that. And the hinge goes in like that. Very nice little compact pack. And the blade by the blades by the way locked. So let's find the large blade. And this large blade is serrated the entire. Well, no, it's not. This is the uh, something I like by the way about Victorinox. They do a partial serration sometimes. They put the serrated stuff at the end and the uh, smooth edge right here, closer to the hinge. And it's a chisel grind, which is, is okay with me because so is my uh, so is my Emerson that I carry every day. But I think that's pretty cool because that means if you want to do some fine carving, you got it right here. So um, speaking of that, let's just let's just test that out while we're at it. So we'll test the uh, serrated first. I've got some. Um, I got some paracord here. I thought we just we'll just see how well the serrated is because it's not super super big aggressive serrations. You can see them. They're just they should be small enough to do a pretty good job of cutting. Oh yeah, no, like nobody's business. So that's fine there. But what about the uh, fine edge? How how well is it carved? Let's see. I got some wood here. This is this is just a piece of I don't know pine or something. But let's just see. We'll try to carve a few feathers. <laughs> just because I know that's not really what you would use a. Uh, use a multi-tool for it, but you might, because it's multi, right? So that's where the edge, the seeds, very, very controllable with that little, that little, it's only about a half inch of, of fine edge, but really for, for, for small light stuff, that's really all you need. Man, it's, it's cutting in this, into this wood like nobody's business. And then we'll try the, uh, the uh, serrations to do the same thing. So they both work really good. I wish you could feel this. It feels really, really, really sharp. So, but, oh, you know what I forgot? Man, I can't believe I forgot it. So 
why don't we do the redneck sharp test? I mean, we got to be consistent here, right? Even though we're not outside. So, and you see, I've been doing it a little much. I thought about just shaving my whole arms and starting over, but because I don't, but anyway, so we'll start with the serration and see if the serrations do the shaving thing. They prefer, I don't think they will because there's just a gap in there, but they don't. So what about, we'll try with a, with a little, with a little, oh man, with a little uh, chisel edge. Oh my goodness, look at that. Would you just look at it? Okay. Oh yeah, she's redneck sharp, but you know what? D just to be consistent, everybody wants to see a paper, paper cutting test. I don't know why, but they do. Well, maybe everybody doesn't, but some people do. So we're gonna do that. We'll start here with it and see. Okay. So that's the fine edge, it's cut pretty well, but it's not really enough, long enough to get much slice. So even the serrations did okay. So that's about as much as I'm gonna do with a, with a paper cutting test because we got a lot of stuff to check out here. So anyway, oh man, I hit it, hit the garbage can with it. Okay, so that is the uh, long blade, uh, large blade they're calling it. And by the way, that thing is, it's about cutting edge about two and three eighths inches long. So. There's that, and it's the, it's, it's the standard Victorinox stainless steel they always use, and it's, uh, in my opinion, it's really good steel. It, it does a good job. So we'll close that. Now, you notice it's got a locking blade, which I like. Uh, no sharp spine there, but all you got to do unlock it is you pull that, pull that, those little, um, those little levers right there down. So you don't even have to move it to, to, to open it to unlock it. Just pull the levers down and lock it. So, Okay, so that was the pliers, the wire cutters. And the large blade, let's take a look at the rest of these. Let's see. Next item on the list, number six, is a Phillips screwdriver uh, here. And it is a, uh, let's see, this thing is about, has a, oh, I'll say it's about an inch and three-eighths, almost an inch and a half shaft, which is pretty cool. Next, oh, this locks. All these tools lock, which is good. Next, we have a reamer slash, um punch and that's not it okay yeah, there we go so this has a reamer slash punch and it's got a pretty sharp chisel edge on it it'll poke holes you want to try that it also has a hook on it for carrying things or whatever and that's pretty good for 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 tightening up knots to be honest with you that's a pretty good good little, little use for that let's see if we can drill a hole with this thing you want to see how hard it'd be to drill a hole and I don't think it'll be that difficult. We did that with the other. I mean, it did go. It's pretty stinking quick, too, to be honest with you. And this is wood. So imagine how quick it'll go through leather if you need to make another hole in your belt or whatever. And there it goes. It went right through there. That's already through. So not bad there at all. Um, Got to give that one pretty pretty good credit there. Um, with a multi-purpose hook. And let's see. Next it says there's a can opener. Where, oh, where's the can opener? There's the can opener. So... It's just a standard can opener like on a lot of these Swiss Army knives. You hook this little lip here on the rim of the cam, can and you work your way around. Okay, honestly, I don't know if this is going to work. This is an empty Jocko um, Go can. Uh, it's not really designed for this. It's got a really high lip on it, but we'll try it. You hook this little lip here, this little hook here underneath the out of the rim, and then you take the other part, and it's, it's, it's got a, um, it pokes down in it. And I don't think it's going to work because this can just doesn't have enough, um, it's too much of a depression, too much of a depression here, but that's the way you do it. You hook this on here like that, and then this part right here, this little, this little pokey part right there, right there, pokes in. So um, maybe I'll make a, a YouTube short video showing you how to use a can opener uh, if you don't know how. So there's that, and then it has a, on the end of that, it's a three millimeter screwdriver as well. Let's see, then it has this, okay, back up the other side. There's a uh, bottle opener right here. There's a bottle opener. And a um, little wire bender. And the wire bender is something you can use like um, the little notch right there. Right, that little notch right there is a wire bender. And for example, you could take this thing and put put a piece of wire in it and use it to, uh, and this is almost too small a wire, but you bend it like that. It just, it's, like a, it's just a little lever. You can, you can catch the wire and bend it. So there's that. Uh, since there's a crate opener, I'm not sure what that means. There's a six millimeter screwdriver, a crate opener. Let me look at that. Time to get the old instructions out and try to find out what the heck a crate opener is. Because I don't know. They got me. So that's, I'm, there's a little doofus action going on there. Okay, so I guess that's, 
kind of a chisel is what this is. This screwdriver is, is kind of beveled down so you can you can get in and prop and, and use it like a chisel. So we'll call it, that's, that makes sense, okay? And then there is a really nice pair of scissors. Uh, let's find the scissors. I think this is the scissors right here. We'll see how well the scissors cut. I'm pretty sure they'll cut paper like nobody's business. Um, so yeah, there's that. Let me get, I got something else we can try to cut here though. I got an old dirty rag that I use to clean guns and stuff. So we'll try that because this is a little different. It's a pretty heavy duty stuff. It's got a nice rim on it, or edge on it, whatever you want to call it. I'm gonna try that, let's see how well, it, oh yeah. It cuts through that like nobody's business too. So that's good. Um, I'm trying to be as thorough as I can. I know I'm probably being a little ridiculous. Okay, now we get to have some fun. We have a wood saw. Uh, the wood saw is sharp like nobody's business, and I think it is right here. So, yeah, this, and it has a really sharp spine on it, and we'll take a look at that. But this wood saw, I got some wood just for the wood saw. Let's see how well the wood saw cuts with the wood saw. How much wood could a wood saw cut if a wood saw could, could cut wood? <laughs> Let's, you want to cut this thing off? Let's just cut it off. I don't want to shake the table. Man, this thing is so sharp, it's almost like... It's hard to get it started because it bites so deeply. This table's so old and rickety, I'm telling you, man, watch it. Just watch it shake. See that? See what I mean? So. I'm using very, very light pressure trying to not bite in. This, these teeth are so sharp, they just bite so aggressively, which is I was not surprised because these Victorinox knives have such great saws on them. All the, all the Victor Knox stuff does. They're just really, really good saws. Wow, okay. Well, I think you can see um, I'm not going to keep shaking everything up. By the way, um, this is not on their list of an official uses or task, but I thought we'd give this thing a shot. This has a really nice sharp spine, and I don't want to melt everything here, but you can see it does a good job of scraping a ferro rod as well. So... That's the wood saw. Moving right along so rapidly, we have a metal file and a metal saw. So the way that works is this is a file, but the side of it is cut into like a hacksaw teeth. So I've got some wood, some metal here to try. And I've got a couple different pieces of metal. I don't know how well, again, because of the uh, shakiness of my table, I don't know how well we're gonna be able to do this, but I've got two different pieces of metal. So I've got a pretty solid piece of uh, steel all thread rod, threaded rod, and I'm going to uh, attempt to see how, how hard it'd be to saw on this. Let's just see. Because you really need for the saw to be harder than the metal. Generally, files are, are like super hard with steel, but I don't know that this is really is, but it's cutting a groove in it, so it would probably um, eventually get the job done. But let's try something a little softer. This is a piece of aluminum. Pretty sure this is aluminum, some sort of softer metal. I think it's aluminum, it's really lightweight. Let's see how well it cuts this. <laughs> It cuts it, okay? I mean, it would take a while. This is not a big hack saw. It's, it's just probably like, I don't know, it's very, very fine. It's probably, like, I don't know, 100 teeth per inch or something. So it's a real fine saw, but it did it. So, what about the file? We're gonna try to file the corners of this thing down and see how it does. Oh man, this aluminum, this aluminum files really easily. So the aluminum files really good with that saw. We'll try the other one. Oh yeah, so. Very, very quickly, you can see, you can see the corner there, it, it did. What about the uh, all thread? Because one of the things about all thread, if you ever use this is, when you cut it with a hacksaw, it leaves little burrs on the end that make it really hard to thread in. So let's just see if we can kind of round the end off, which I have to, you know, sometimes you have to do that if you're trying to make this thing work. When you, when you get a cut, you get a rough cut on the end of it, you have to kind of round that burr off. It's working. Again, it's not gonna be for, for, for your, your major task. You're not gonna rebuild an engine with this thing, but 
for little handy uses, I mean, it works. So did a little bit pretty good on that. So there is all that. Now it says we have a two millimeter screwdriver. We had a three millimeter and a six millimeter. Let's find a two millimeter. Gosh, man, this thing's got a lot of screwdrivers on it. Oh, this is it. That's it, just a two millimeter screwdriver. Okay, so nothing but a little screwdriver with about a one inch shank on it. So there's that. Then there's a uh, sharpened chisel here. This is sharpened right here. Um, so it's a sharpened chisel and scraper. Is a cable cutter, so you use that little corner right there, that corner right there, to split a cable longitudinal, like a, um, a coax cable or something, or even like one of these, like you could use it like this. I brought, I'm trying to do a halfway decent test. So you just take that and you, you cut it right down the middle like that, and it opens it up, see? Just like that. There you go. So that'll cut that sheath, and you can cut these off, and then you can, let's do that. I mean, we might as well just go all in if we're going to do this testing, right? So we'll cut that off right there. Just a piece of that. And see if we can try the other stuff out because there's also a wire stripper and scraper here on the same tool, which is right here. And you can see that's kind of like a big scalloped uh, chisel cut there. And one of those, the smallest one closer to the hinge, Small little groove is for stripping and scraping regular wire. And you just like put it in here like so and twist it around, twist it around it like that. It, should, it cuts the sheathing off and then you can just scrape it off like that. And it works. It's stinking worse. And then the, uh, the bigger of the um, focus grasshopper, the bigger of the little notches there is for doing the same thing like coax cable or something. So that's pretty good there. Uh, there's that. And then... There's supposed to be a lanyard hole here somewhere. Where is a lanyard hole? I guess you can use one of these little lo not notches that the uh, your corkscrew goes in to, to use for a lanyard hole. So that might be a bit of a stretch, but I don't know. So that's that's all the tools that are supposed to be in here, right? Then here's what I thought was really cool about this. Now we got this. This is cool. This is a ratchet. Um, you, just, you flip it around to uh, change from loosey, from loosey to tidy, like so. You put your ratchet like so, and you can get some pretty good torque on that. I mean, let's face it, this is not, it's not going to be for big stuff, so you're not going to need a crazy amount of torque, but you might need more torque than you can get with, say, just a little straight, a little straight screwdriver style uh, bit. Because I have tried to take some some torque stuff off recently on a, on a, um, some firearm stuff that was really really on there. So this could be a really handy thing to uh, have. It comes with two different Allen wrenches, a Phillips, a small Phillips, a really, really large Phillips, and two Torx bits, but there's also packs, places for four more, and it's a standard quarter-inch drive, so you can replace these and use whatever you want to use with them, which is pretty cool. And then also, what's also pretty cool, in my opinion, is everything snaps together here nice and nice and neat, like so, I guess, either way, and then it all goes back into the case just like so so this goes in here like uh maybe like i think i try to put the ratchet on the outside but maybe not maybe like this like this this one goes over here like this this screwdriver goes over here like this or vice versa i don't think it really matters and this goes in like that and that goes in there like that and it's got a nice little velcro closure there and there you go Okay, well, that was an admittedly somewhat rambling look at the Victronox Swiss Tool Spirit X with Ratchet. Um, and I guess you could even call this a somewhat Ratchet video, but <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't resist that. But I wanted to do my best to, um, to try to leave my own opinions out of this as much as possible and just show you the capabilities of this tool, what it can and can't do, where you can see, see for yourself and, and, and making a determination as to whether or not this is something you'd be interested in checking out further. Um, because this, to be real, this is not a cheap, cheap multi-tool. This thing's between 150 to 180 bucks, depending on where, where you find it. And I think it's a real good one. And, and, and if you need something like this, it might be a really, it might be well worth it to you, but it is pretty expensive. And I didn't want to, you know, I don't want to just show a video. Hey, this thing's great. Look at this. It's great. You should buy this. That's not what I'm saying. And I, I, I'm, using, I'm not saying that ever, that you should buy something. My goal in doing all these videos is to, um, as much as possible, to keep my, my own opinions out of it and let you see what the capabilities are and to do a good demonstration of them. So hopefully I've done that here. 
and I'm rambling, I know, so I just really want to show you this. I thought it was a really cool. I've seen a lot of multi-tools. I've never seen one with a ratchet. I thought, man, that's pretty stinking cool. So I thought you might think so too. So anyway, um, <laughs> I'll shut up now. Once again, thanks to the folks at Victinox for sending me this so I can show it to you. And as always, thank you for watching Survival on Purpose. Remember, survival's not an accident, so be prepared. I'll see you next time.